majority of the students within the building um, used digital technologies. So from researching this culture within the Elitary building, most of the technology was digitalised. The um, majority of the students were using uh, their mobile phones or their personal laptops or um, Macs that are located in the lounge downstairs. Um, also, um, the use of technology in the building, it kind of influences the students to more focus on their work because they're surrounded by digital technology which they associate with personal study. Um, so from observing this we found, we noticed that um, digital software surrounded by students encourage them to focus on their work. Also students were using their phones and laptops at the same time whilst they're studying. So they could be socialising whilst on the phone but um, using a laptop. I think that technology is something that humans created uh, to help them with their work and to ease their lives. Can I say this? Yeah. <laughs> ease their lives and to improve their work. Ooh. Oh my god! <laughs> From observing, I found that once a camera is in someone's presence, they kind of stage themselves. Um, which is kind of similar to what um, Ferris Goffman says about um, individuals putting on a performance and I feel that um, a camera being in someone's presence kind of makes them change their behaviour and their personality. Um, through the, the um, unconstructed interviews, constructed interviews, um, it kind of made the data more um, valid due to the um, elements of it being similar to a natural conversation. For me it's just where we are. You know, Wait, it's like everything like, around you. Yeah, it's like it was prophesied. Yeah. The world is going to have technology. I'm it's a way of life, you know. Ooh, it's a way of life, it's, it's culture. So, how many, do you use your phone a lot? Do you use your phone more or your laptop more? Well, I use my laptop more. Mostly on your phone? Yeah. Phones are usually just, I only use my phone for talk, calling and texting. Oh. What a phone is used for, basically. The oh. essence of what a phone is. Okay. <laughs> That's all I do with it. So you don't think that your phone is like a device, so it doesn't like... I don't think of it like that. It is a device, but yeah. I feel as if it's unnecessary. I don't need all that stuff in my phone. Personally. Do you have like social media apps on your phone? I do, but I don't use them. I have them because everyone else them. Oh. <laughs> I really This generation of students are quite revolved around digital technology and um, our generation is almost raised by technology. So during lectures also people use their personal laptops rather than pen and paper. Um, I feel students prefer to use um, technology, um, digital technology for their um, studies rather than pen and paper. Um, not that long ago I did write everything mm -hmm. um, and I remember thinking very very clearly I'm going to have to relearn how I do this mm. because now I have to write emails all the time and now I have to write slides oh, yeah. or now I have to you know I have to do something where I'm interacting with the computer so Accessibility to new technology within this building um, seems to be quite useful for students, particularly media students. Um, any other building that's in Coventry University is not really as um, adapted to new technology, which is probably um, it's more appropriate for media students to be to have a, um, a more digitalised atmosphere. Oh, do you find this building quite useful for your subjects? Uh, sometimes it does because there's media non shop and then yeah. but unfortunately it is not open for 24 hours so this week we chose um, random candidates for the focus group on the discussion of friendship four candidates were female and one being male well, for like, no. for both like <laughs> really, obviously not girls like like she was saying, yeah. But for boys, yeah. For girls, like you know, cause, like I said with my flatmates, sometimes they were talking about girl stuff, and I'm just sitting there, like, yeah. <laughs> okay. 
I think all my friends have like an element of me. That's why I get like no mm. one. There's just no one person who's like exactly like me. I think I would get annoyed because if someone, I get annoyed with myself. So I just yeah. like, we would be friends if you're just like me. The question of heterosexual male of female best friends is highly discussed topic in social media, in in particularly on Twitter, which is also probably why respondents had to discuss more on this topic as a whole. Do you think it's possible, because there's quite a debate around this issue, do you think it's um, possible for a heterosexual male and female to be best friends? I think it's not, it's possible. Mm -hmm. Although, yes, some people, they might catch feelings, yeah. but it is possible because I've had different, like, guy friends, like best friends, mm -hmm. but we feel like not because of, like, any other reason but only because I could grow apart that was the only yeah. reason why we would like fall apart mm -hmm. I think it's possible mm -hmm. uh, for my experience it's not because uh, I had my best friend mm -hmm. but now he's my bo boyfriend okay so yeah I think no yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's possible because I so my flatmates there's mm -hmm. like two little girls I'm like I'm friends with them and, like it's just it's just friendship, it doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything else. Mm -hmm. But like, I wouldn't say they're best friends, because like, there's, there's stuff that I would tell more guy friends that I wouldn't tell to them. Yeah. Because like, I just find that awkward talking to them, right? In addition, Goffman's study also showed that to understand participants on interviews, we must also bet the subjects more often, which could, which should also forward and direct, which should also be forward, direct and candid. In the process, we use both structured and unstructured interview methods. And this is to get the best results that we could, while also allowing the respondents to also discuss the topic themselves, rather than feel that they have been assigned fixed questions that they must answer accordingly. from a sensory date. Majority of the time when the respondents is about to answer, they use their hands. I have one friend um, and I didn't talk with her, I didn't chat with her, I didn't see with her like a lot of like one year but when we see one time per year um, we always talking and like yeah. Establish a friendship with all the respondents, which helped the process as well. Which, in, which also influenced the social interaction with the social group. This relates to how Anne Oakley, the feminist, structures her interviews and develops a friendship with her study. Despite being only what there being only one male respondent, his response was efficient and very engaging. Like anyone could just like just answer. Yeah, anyone can answer. Uh. As there are more female candid candidates um, in the focus group, they may have um, more confidence to speak about this topic due to gender similarities. Using unstructured interviews, which is what we also did, helps us further the discussion. This also helped us get more information and also let the participants share their information with each other and their thoughts as well, which helps verify and helps create a more of a varied response, which we use as part of our research. And I feel that a lot of research methods now include also structured and unstructured methods, just to get a repertoire of elements to add towards the data that you would collect. Visual research is categorised as central research. This week, our task was to share our personal photos and describe the experiences to the interviewers within the photo albums. <laughs> this is my best experience so far of university. Bubble tea. <laughs>
When getting to know someone, we often ask them of their hobbies and interests to get a reflection of their personality. Using the photo essay method allows us to construct a biography of someone. This is done by associating pictures with words that then become a mythology. But whilst this research was happening, everyone did not always agree on the judgment of someone's personality through his or her photos. Is it you a little bit of a party animal? Yes. And you get about. Oh! <laughs> I've retired now, don't worry. No, maybe it's like she's social, she goes to parties, she <laughs> goes with friends. What negative thing? No. And you know quite, quite a lot of people. I'm not bait. <laughs> One of the respondents shared some photos with her associated with several people. From this, one of the interviewers labelled her as popular, whereas another respondent argued that she is just a good communicator. This relates to what Gillian Rose stated about visual methods being conceptually, philosophically and theoretically diverse. We have certain judgments of the way we see things according to our culture. Respondents, being students, presented their photo documents through Facebook or on their mobile devices. We realised a pattern of social drinking, food and selfies populating the different photo albums. These different aspects within the photo albums help construct an identity and as they are common amongst young people it almost becomes a collective identity. The media tend to use these words such as rebellious, social and vanity to describe youth and these images contribute to living up to the social expectation of youth. Some respondents were a little apprehensive to share some photos because others that were not present during the interview had their photos being displayed. This could raise some ethical issues within our research due to confidentiality. You don't mess around. Ooh, baby, you don't mess around. Ooh, baby, you don't mess around. Ooh, baby, you don't mess around. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get Hi, I'm Sandra. Um, I want to talk about why I choose media and communication as my um, university subject. It's because that when I was in A level, um, media is one of my chosen subjects and I love it and I very enjoy it. And in A level, they taught us about movies, TV shows, computer gaming, and um, of course, a theory-based thing, and which allow us can understand even more about media in terms. But however, media isn't about just TV shows and films and gaming and stuff. In so um in this module, while I'm learning and progressing, I go even deeper in the media. So every week. We get tasks to do as a group, but also we have individual one like this, what I'm doing now, as a vlog to record my feeling and my work, how I how I progress, how I do now. And um, at first, I thought media and communication would be more um, writing based. Virtual ethnography is the process of a researcher using traditional ethnography methods that are transferred onto social network spaces. To understand one's experience in a particular field, it's good to get as much in-depth data as possible, especially over a long period of time. Each vlog was recorded for at least three minutes, discussing how it feels to be a media student. Using ourselves to explain how it feels to be a media student is obviously one of the best tactics, because it's personal, valid and informative data. For example, if we presented this question to media professors, the answers will not be representative. The vlogging process almost became similar to an autoethnography. Whilst explaining being a member of the media and student community, we were able to reflect on how the study of media has affected our lives. 
Online communities are not necessarily that social, meaning they create a boundary between interaction and human body, compared to real life when we are physically presented with several aspects of communication. Humans tend to talk to themselves from reflecting their lives. That's why using the vlog method to grab this data was most effective because we were alone in the process and were less distracted from people pressuring an intellectual response about something so informal. Despite there being no physical interaction shown between the vlogs and the speech being completely informal, the audience are likely to pay attention as it has adapted from the traditional use of ethnography in terms of interviews. In terms of digital research, another method that may have worked is an online forum created through hashtags on social media. As social media is mainly populated with young students, this would have conducted the most appropriate data for this study. Vlogs have enabled an online community on the social media website, YouTube, where young people across the globe are sharing their university experiences. Within this virtual community, people exchange comments by using words on screens, exposing their similar moments that may have been mentioned in the vlog they've seen. For example, media students being presented with these vlogs may have identical descriptions about being a media student. Space is a continuous area or expanse which is free, available or unoccupied. Spaces hold positions that are defined through mediated and political terms, meaning our perception of space is represented through media and enforced or impacted through politics. Interconnectedness within globalisation is maintained through media representations of different parts of the world. If we use the BBC, for example, it's sex stereotypical depictions of what we think of the particular location due to the stories that are based in these countries. Syria, war, Nigeria, terrorism, USA, celebrities. How do we know when a space is being mistreated or misused? Are we the navigators of the space or does the space have more effect on our human behaviour? Functionalist Talcott Parsons so individuals as social subjects, whereby the institutions affect the human instead of the human influencing the institution. Do we become robots to the fact that we have entered a space where we have to completely change our behaviour? When we enter a restaurant, why does our voice automatically become formal? Why does gender differences matter when using a public restroom and not our private toilets at home? The space we used was a seminar room in Coventry University, Ellen Terry Building. The space is undeniably used for educational purposes, but once we introduced a Mexican wave into the setting, <laughs> when disrupting spaces in such ways, it can almost be read as deviant because it goes against social expectation and set norms of that environment. The activity that we chose to do is conventionally set in sports events to exhilarate the crowd. The disruption that was less effective to students and more effective on the lecturers, creating a sense of confusion. This ties in with the fact that lived experiences is a key feature when researching space. People was actually standing up and getting involved in the Mexican wave. And that shows in contrast to how they were moments ago when they were just simply sitting down and observing a big screen. Some theorists argue that there are predefinitions of space that create fixed perceptions of space because it is learnt through culture. Culture is programming of the mind. We use our surrounding objects to create sense of a space, similar to how temperature processes with several motions of particles coming together. task for experiment in the century we engaged in a discussion talking about a chosen item this chosen item was popcorn the idea was to speak about what we commonly associate with popcorn using the inspiration from the five senses this form of sens sensory ethnography showed 
a material understanding of senses being interconnected. Um, it feels like, is it to smell it? Yeah, smell it. Um, very sweet, like toffee kind of smell. Yeah, it's very sweet. Mm-hmm. Would you do you particularly enjoy eating it or? Um. Yeah, I would. Do you want me to eat it? Yeah. <laughs> Try one. Okay. Describe the texture. Describe describe the feeling of it. It's popcorn. It's very crunchy and then and soft and then. <laughs> what does it remind you? Does it remind you of anything? Um, it re reminds me of when I watch a film and I just keep like eating it. Um, yeah, it's not really like usually like in the cinema we got like salt and sweet. This one is toffee, so it's different. Okay, I'm just eating a lot of overpowering flavored popcorn, really, especially this nasty toffee. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, right now, I feel like I'm in the, in the cinema right now, just eating popcorn. I feel like that kind of sensation that you feel when you eat something that you're familiar with. And yeah, it's really overpowering sweetness. When we went into detail about the taste or the smell, it revealed that others had different perspectives than, than what others have previously experienced. And in this, in this discussion, what turned out to be was that through discussion, discussing our different um, experiences, our sensory profile has been now being refined. Ooh, baby, you don't mess around. Ooh, baby, you don't mess around. This is my reflection from 182. I've been experimenting with the ideas such as applying the use of visual ethnography into our behind the scenes video and the idea of that how you can use it into a research method. The project was when we were researching the visual. I felt this improved my understanding of how influential images can be on our knowledge. The illusion that using visual methods can have many disadvantages, mainly the fact that everyone has different perceptions which creates um, not really like one truth, so necessarily there isn't one truth within the phenomenon, it's all like mythology. Um, my first chapter was of people researching. We have two random candidates on a discussion of a friendship. It helped me, it helped me to improve my interview skills, and I really enjoyed to see how different people are looking in the world. Doing research in culture, I have learned that it's based on the principle of naturalism, which should be researched in a physical science, which means that the evidence is based on a scientific method. And the advantage for that is that the results are immediately grounded in research and we can see in the unseen. However, there are some disadvantages as well in my limit that participation and observation. We can get down.